Sheriff MacDonald. Tonight, the pop star and the president. If anyone really thinks that I wanted to give up the possibility of going back to my home in America and to actually put myself in danger, then they're stupid. George Michael explains his outspoken attack on George Bush. My two crimes appear to be that I'm gay and I've got a big mouth with it. Also tonight, the woman behind the president. Our record is one of having assembled one of the largest coalitions in uh, modern history to fight the war on terror. An exclusive interview with the most powerful woman in the world. I would not be in the least surprised if there were a black woman president in my lifetime. Good evening from Washington. That interview with America's national security advisor Condoleezza Rice on the war against terror and relations with Britain coming up. But first, the rock star George Michael has been talking to me in an exclusive interview about the row over his new video and single, Shoot the Dog. It's a biting satire of George Bush and the president's tough stance against Saddam Hussein and the war on terror. It also depicts Tony Blair as the president's poodle. In this country, the singer has been criticized for what Americans regard as insulting behavior and insensitivity. I asked George Michael if he now has any regrets. So, I think that should give you some idea of how volatile the international situation is at the moment, sir. I see, General. Uh, you didn't understand a word of that, did you, Mr. President? No, I did not. Would you like me to get Professor Liedstrom to explain it? I think that might help. Uh, you! <laughs> Professor Liedstrom! I believe I have a right to protect the people I love, and I'd certainly rather sit in a room here with you today having to defend my views and I would certainly rather make that sat uh, satirical video than be sitting in another room a year from now with those same people I love waiting to die and wishing that I had spoken up uh, a year before just in case it had made a difference. He's no stranger to controversy but this week has been a difficult one even by George Michael's standards. Pilloried by the press on both sides of the Atlantic his new single, Shoot the Dog, has been hitting the headlines for all the wrong reasons. It's a song that questions the wisdom of Britain's close relationship with America at the time of extreme tension in the Middle East. I attempted to make a video to try and ask our, our, our own Prime Minister, who is becoming very presidential in his behaviour, to remember that there is an entire public here that doesn't necessarily agree with everything Mr. Bush wants to do. It says Mustafa, Mazel Tov, the Gaza boys, all that holy stuff. I get the feeling when it all goes off they're going to shoot the dog, they're going to shoot the dog. I see Britain as potentially the dog that gets, that gets killed uh, to show its master that, that whoever f***s off with them means business. While the single is undoubtedly controversial, it's the accompanying video that has caused most outrage. The satirical cartoon is scathing of both Tony Blair and President Bush. Having those opinions is one thing, but why did you have to make such a vicious and personal attack on President Bush and on Tony Blair? I think Mr. Blair needs some criticism. He's getting criticism from all sides, much more vicious than the criticism that I've leveled at him. And all that seems to be really uh, inappropriate out there is the fact that I'm a pop star making criticism of the Prime Minister. The now, question being, does Mr. Blair need criticism from you? Absolutely. I mean, this is the question that everyone's asking. I do feel, as a British uh, taxpayer, that I have every right to criticise Mr Blair. I am in a very, very fortunate position simply that by opening my mouth, I can encourage a debate that may save the lives of people I love. And 
if anyone can, can honestly say that I'm not dragging some of these questions into the mainstream, then I think they're in serious denial. Although some press reports have accused George of trying to cash in on the events of September 11, the singer insists that the track was written long before the attacks on the World Trade Center. On September the 11th, which I swear, and I swear this on my mother's grave, I swear this, on September the 11th, I was almost finished. I had two lines to go on the chorus, and a producer, one of my co-producers, ran into the room and said, you have to switch on the TV, you're not going to believe what you see. I was just completely frozen, because I couldn't believe the timing of it. 6-12. The World Trade Towers, gone. And so are hundreds and likely thousands of lives. In the aftermath of the attack, George faced a dilemma. What to do with the song? As this year's progressed, there started to be voices that were... Um, talking about the possibility of the bombing of Iraq as part of the war on terror. I started to hear people saying, come on, come on Blair, you know, Bush obviously we need someone strong, we need a leader, but we don't need to just go follow blindly where Bush goes. We have to look at why this has happened. Uh, we have to look at whether bombing Iraq is really the sensible thing to do. And could we please all have a bit of a discussion? I was thinking, it's not getting into the mainstream. Maybe this is the reason I wrote this song when I did. Maybe there is a reason it should go out. Maybe I can help in some way. But something in me told me to put my real thoughts and my work together at this point and actually have the courage to stand behind them, even though I knew it could be really, really damaging. You must have realised that some Americans would be horrified by it. By the video. What they're horrified at is that I'm poking fun at Mr. Bush, full stop, because actually, Mr. Bush is only really a small con piece of that. He's their president. Is he their president? And that but he is not presents a great deal to America. Of course, yes, but it is reactionary to pretend that you can't uh, satirize a president. They invented the idea of lampooning. It's an American tradition. It's something that they did so that they themselves can uh, attack their own political leaders when they need to. But the backlash has been very harsh. I mean, the New York Post has branded you, you must have seen it, a washed-up pervert. Mm -hmm. And some radio stations have banned the single. After the New York Post um, so kindly called me a washed-up pervert and insinuated that I was uh, uh, critical of America for trying to defend itself, no, neither of which, well, actually, washed-up pervert, well, that's a matter of opinion for people who are homophobic and don't actually like music, I would say. But for some reason, I don't have a right to talk about anything because I got caught four years ago with a police officer in a Los Angeles toilet. Somehow, that eradicates all possibility that what I'm saying might be for the best. Do you think this will change forever the way you are seen in America? I really hope not. I really hope not because, you know, I, I love my home there, but it's very possible that the reactionary element to that article will change that part of my life forever, and I think that's really sad. There is no, no um, message whatsoever. That Last week, in a damage limitation exercise, George agreed to a telephone interview for American television. I would never criticize America for its response. Um, and then at the end, of course, in the way that these things are done on television, someone with a very broad accent ranted at me. You can't tell me that you did not intend to slam our country when you slam our president. By portraying him going to bed with your prime minister, you slam our country. And people can say that we do it ourselves. Excuse me. You can talk about your own family, but I'll be dang if I'm going to let somebody else step in from the outside and talk about them. And at the end of it, a couple of people started cheering with her, and then the rest of the audience booed her. George Michael, George Michael, before you respond, I want to let you know that we have some mixed reaction here in the audience. We have a lot of people who were booing what Leah had to say. So that audience pretty much stood behind me. It was a PR exercise that may have worked in America, but here it backfired. Certain newspapers chose to report that it was George who had been heckled and booed by the studio audience. This, along with many other stories printed over the last ten days, have led him to believe that he's the target of a deliberate smear campaign. I know who this is about. This is about Reuben Murdoch and my making uh, what he 